North Dakota today, we're talking to David Wald from Lux Wealth Advisors about doing a mid-year financial checkup. David, we've talked about making and sticking to a budget as well as maintaining a savings goal. Now let's talk about investments. It's time to look at that portfolio as well, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We've had really the last two years, two and a half years, we've had some pretty extreme swings in the market, both in the fixed income or bond market, as well as in the stock market. Right now, everybody probably looks at their 401k and is pretty happy. If you would have went back a year ago, um, they weren't so happy. So really, it's a great time to look at your portfolio and say, okay, do we need to make any changes? Do we need to rebalance our portfolio? What I mean by that is, you know, if, if, you're, if your stocks have had a good run up, maybe it's maybe we need to sell some of them because the portfolio is too aggressive now because they've had a good run up and the bonds have been you know pushed down maybe we sell some stocks and buy some bonds but rebalancing that portfolio is so important and if you know if that portfolio is outside of your retirement plan make sure you talk to your tax advisor to make sure that you know you don't have any unnecessary tax consequences from that Okay, is there a guideline that people can follow for how age and maybe risk level coordinate when it comes to investments? Yeah, you know, when you look at it, you know, as we get closer to retirement and using that money, or as you get closer to your goal, if it's not in a retirement account, and you're using that money, people tend to get more conservative as they get closer to retirement. One thing I always caution people is not to get more conservative than they need to be. So when you go into retirement, Wayne, and let's say you retire at 65, that portfolio with your life expectancy of 87, just the average male life expectancy, is still a 22 year portfolio. So getting it too conservative may cause things like not keeping up with inflation or taking advantage of, of market upswings when you could be taking advantage of those. Okay, you talked about the stock market right now as opposed to a year ago. Let me throw you a bit of a curveball here. Because of the volatility we've seen on the national level on the political side, you've got one candidate that uh, is, is going through an assassination attempt. You've got another candidate who drops out on, sat on Sunday, and someone else will be stepping in for him. Is that going to, in your mind, affect the stock market and, and how our portfolios do? Well, the stock market does, does not like uncertainty. Yeah. And that does have an effect. Now, we've seen it be relatively calm in the last week and a half, even with what's going on in the markets. We had a couple of days where the markets pulled back significantly. Part of that is people taking profits. But I think even more than the, the, than the presidential election, people are going to wonder, what are the Feds going to do? When are they going to cut interest rates? Yeah. Because that will have the biggest effect, I feel, on the markets. Yeah, and, and we've been, you know, we've been hearing rumblings that you know maybe at this time this year maybe later this year we don't know when interest rates are going to be down is that going to make a big effect on people is that going to give people more confidence as far as the economy is concerned yeah i think what that does is that when we lower some interest rates i think you're going to have people that have been maybe sitting on the sidelines waiting to buy a house or buy a vehicle or something like that you're going to have them move then into the marketplace because interest rates then come down sure. and they have a little more buying power Right. You know, I caution everybody, though, with increased buying power, a lot of times also comes with increased prices. So, you know, when you're looking at buying those big ticket items, really weigh out what is the cost of buying that item, the yeah. total cost, meaning if you are, you know, if you have an 8% interest rate, take the term of the loan and see what is my total cost, what am I putting towards the principal, and what am I paying in interest? Okay, we're down to a minute, David, and I want to talk about debt here a little bit. Does it make sense if people have various debts that they're paying off to consolidate it all into one debt? It really does. And sometimes it makes it, number one, easier to manage, and you can see progress towards your goals. That's huge for people. If they can see progress, like I'm chipping away at this debt and I see some meaningful reduction in my debt, people feel good about that. But also, consolidating debt if interest rates come down you may want to look at refinancing and consolidating some higher interest debt okay. the lower interest debt a lot of times like right now if you did a mortgage you know five years ago leave it alone because more than likely it's it's less than half of what it or less than uh, half of what it would be now so make sure that you are staying within that budget of what you can afford on a monthly basis all right really really quickly health life home auto insurance it's a good time to review that as well 
Re review all your insurance coverages. Make sure that you have an appropriate amount of coverage. A lot of times I see people come in here and their auto insurance is way too low. If they get in an accident and they get sued, they'll, you know, they're covering $100,000. That's not much anymore. They get sued for a million dollars. The insurance company covers the first 100,000. You got to come up with the next nine, 900,000. That could break you. Yeah, and home prices have increased as well, so make sure you're covered uh, properly with your home insurance. David yes. Wald from Lux Wealth Advisors, thank you so much. Great information. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, coming up, we're going to talk to Claire Henke from Love & Care about the home health care options they provide.